Good day, everybody. Got a uh, special episode today. Going to have uh, Primal Paris join me in a couple minutes here, and we're going to have a little discussion and a little raw meat mukbang. So uh, today we're going to have uh, grass-fed beef steaks, raw unsalted butter, raw eggs, good stuff. But this should be a good one, man. I'm gonna have a guest today, guys, so uh, stick around. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Howdy, howdy. What's up, Primal Paris? Hey, what's up, man? Yo, what's going on? Nothing much, man. Another day in paradise. Yeah, sounds like it. You, yeah. Uh, are you down in Cali or what? Yeah, Huntington Beach. Oh, cool. Yeah, it is paradise down there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a little gloomy today. It has been. It's gotten a little colder, but it's cool here. Is it, uh, is it a warm winter down there, too? Like, it's, it's really warm up here in Nebraska, man. Really? Yeah, it's been, like, unusually warm, dude. Like, it's been in the, like, 50s and 60s. It was, like, almost 70 last week, which is, like, first time in, like, history. Like, four times in history it's been 70 here. So, it's yeah, been a warm crazy. winter. Yeah, that's crazy. That, it's about that here as well. It's just a lot more humid because we're right by the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool, man. What's the temp down there today? Um, Probably like 60s. Like, I would 60, almost 70, probably. Nice, dude. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah, cool, man. man. Yeah, it's good to finally meet you, man. Sorry it took so long to accept your uh, invitation there, but... No, it's all right, man. I understand we all have lives. <laughs> yeah, just got busy, and yeah, I just was like, man, I got to go live with this guy, man. You seemed like an interesting dude, and you seemed pretty knowledgeable on uh, on the diet and just... Yeah. everything in general and i saw you on um i was checking out ibrahim's youtube channel a couple oh. weeks ago and i saw i think he interviewed you right yeah yeah he gave me because uh we we pick up food um there's like a little food club and everyone that like kind of eats primal picks up food there and he usually he's usually there and like he's uh got a lot of friends over there that were like really close with ogenus so mm. it's cool to like kind of talk to all of them they've all had like one-on-ones with ogenus so I like pick up my food from there and he asked to give me an I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Sweet. Yeah. Is that uh was that a food club that Ajna started or is that something? Yeah. I think started? all members were originally in this uh, food group called Rossum. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that kind of got shut down and now they kind of branched off and there's like little food clubs like throughout like Southern California and there's like little pickup locations and we basically get food from the, we like meet up at a club and like distribute it. Nice. Right yeah. on, man. That's yeah. awesome. I have some, like, really nice ground beef. I usually get, like, three pounds of butter and some cheese. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's all really high-quality stuff. I've had stuff from, like, Miller's, which is awesome, too. But, mm -hmm. you know, this, the butter and the dairy, and so it just tastes, like, really, really rich. Is it? So, yeah. I'm assuming the stuff that you get from that Rossum Club is probably better than, like, store butter? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure you've heard about like organic pastures. I mean, when I first got into raw, I think so. Yeah, I think um, uh, Josh Rainer Gold was making some posts about about like stuff he was getting in stores that was no good. Yeah, yeah. So I, I originally had started out, um, you know, eating raw and like just oh my god, this is awesome. We're in California, we can get raw milk like at the store. You just go pick it up. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes, I don't know, if it seems too good to be true, most most times it is. You know. I don't know. I know, dude. <laughs> I, I wonder about that, man, because, like, I hear that, and I'm just like, I wonder if, like, legalizing raw dairy is a good thing or a bad thing. Like, I'm, I suppose it's got its, like, goods and bads, you know? Yeah. But, like, you're putting it in the hands of, like, larger corporations that are going to cut corners and, like, probably feed the animals a bunch of grain and just push it on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I always, because, like, I remember when I first started out, um, I was able to get the raw milk, and I always wanted to make, like, whey and, like cheese and like try try it out and with that organic pastures every time i did it 
it was bitter. It was really? super, super bitter, but not in like a pleasant way, like, like inedible, you know? And I was like, yeah. and yeah. then I do it with this stuff. Like I purposely like leave this milk out and it's like, mm -hmm. it's better and better the more I do that. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, man. Yeah, I remember uh, I used to get cream. Well, I still do sometimes, but I get cream from like a local farmer here and it's all A1 Holstein cows, but it's still, it's good milk and good cream and stuff. But mm. I made some uh, butter off of it one time and it was just like paper white, dude. Like there was no yellow in it at all. And like, yeah. I couldn't figure out if that was because that's just like the breed of the cow or if that was like the diet going into the cow. But um, mm. it's nothing like this Miller stuff. Like it didn't look anything like it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So even though I can probably make my own butter locally, I was like, I'm just gonna pay the extra money and get the, you know, probably more nutritious stuff, you know. Yeah, like honestly, I would rather like just hold off on stuff and pay the, pay a little bit more money, you know, because like there there will be times where I like run low on like butter or things like that, and like I I just won't I just won't eat the bad quality stuff now. Like I'm just at a point in, in time where I'm just like. If not like top tier, then I just like I don't mess with it, you know. Like I'd rather Smart. try to stay away from it. Very wise. It's a wise yeah. choice, man. <clears throat> yeah, I, I've been noticing a lot of detox too lately. When it when it gets like my body for some reason right now is doing its thing, you know. I I got like severely, severely sick, um, probably like three weeks ago, and it was like it felt like strep. Like I got. I had the the body cold and everything and um just mucus sinuses everything like that you know my mm -hmm. first i'm getting like that sick since i've been eating raw yeah you know, I've always like gone to the hospital beforehand and like gotten the antibiotics for the infection and everything like that so mm -hmm. riding this one out it, it was definitely pretty crazy but it was humbling and i made it through it you know what i mean strong mm -hmm. and, and yeah, yeah. it's did it's it, <laughs> did it feel uh did it feel like a bacterial detox or like a viral detox? Oh, I don't know. It was, so I I had like mucus coming out and the sinus pressure and everything. Um, I had been sick before and like gotten colds and flus like here and there, you know, the quick detoxes that I can bounce back from. But this one like put me down a good two weeks. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's like my body needs to do what it needs to do, you know, so I just – I just, I, I ate like six pounds of butter, like in a week. Like I was just like, yeah. <laughs> just butter and eggs. And yeah, yeah that's good, man. That's yeah. good. Dude. It sounds like it's probably viral. If it was like two weeks like that. Like, yeah. I, um, I had a couple, like my first year, I had like a couple really bad illnesses like that. Detox, whatever you want to call it. And mm. uh, one was definitely viral. I don't know if the other one was or not, but like one was definitely viral. Like I had like the shakes and like the sweats and like all that stuff going on. Yeah. And then uh, after the first year, I didn't really get sick at all. I've had a couple, uh, a couple sore throats, which I don't know what what that's from, but um, yeah. almost like it's the beginning stages of like a detox time to creep in. Mm -hmm. But my body just shuts it down and flushes it out. But other than a couple, you know, sore throats, I've been. I've been pretty uh, free of that stuff for the last couple of years. So, yeah. yeah. How long, how long were you into the diet when you got that, uh, that illness there or whatever? So I had been probably doing it like seriously for about a year, like I'm approaching that year mark. Um, yeah. but I, um, you remember when you used to do streams on YouTube, like a couple years ago, yeah. That that's kind of around the time I started. Um, I remember joining some of your streams back then and like chiming, in, like questions. You know what I mean? So that was probably like what two years ago. Yeah, I think that's that. That is when I started. It was uh, it was right before I started this new job, so I wasn't working in the mornings or anything. So I would like wait. I would like wake up in the morning and like do a stream in the morning and like. Yeah, like, you were eating a lot of uh, testicles then. I remember, and you were like the <laughs> yeah. gang or. Yeah. Dude, when I first discovered testicles, dude, that like that that was a game changer, man. I was eating balls for a while, but yeah, I'm glad I uh, I listened to my followers, man. And my followers chime in, and he said, you know, Ogenus doesn't recommend eating those all the time because it can have the same effect that like uh, steroid supplements can have, where it mm -hmm. can actually shut down your natural testosterone production. Makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, and so I'm glad I kind of I stopped hammering the balls down, but. I yeah. still enjoy, I still enjoy the brains too. I have to go pick some up here soon, but dude, I I uh, 
I get a lot of brains because usually they have like little leftovers from where I pick it up from. There's this guy, uh, his name's Scott. He, he's, he's, uh, pretty close. He was pretty close with Ogenus and I get a lot of good insight, you know, like insight intel on, on Ogenus and just kind of like how he did his like briefings when he did his one-on-one -on -one consultations and stuff. And he kind of like throws me like little sprinkles here and there, so, some gems, but, um, yeah, he, he usually gives me brains, like you'll have like brains or like philosophy, just like all these goodies that like, it's hard to get, you know? Yeah. And I, I got to a point where I had so many so brain that I'm, I'm starting to make high brain, you know, I got all this brain in the summer. So like, right now I have like, just pounds of high brain right now. Just, <laughs> people come up to me, they're like, hey, I've been feeling anxious, this, that and third. And like, I'm like, come on by and we'll just like eat some high brain and just like get charged up you know <laughs> oh man dude that's like that's like my dream is to have like uh like a high meat party yeah like have a bunch of people over and eat high meat i think that would be awesome man i know it probably sounds weird to anybody that's never tried it but yeah i think that's truly like the way it was meant to be enjoyed and like i i heard somewhere along the line this may have planted the seed in my head that gave me this idea but I think someone told me that a long time ago, like the, the elites and the rich people used to do that. I mean, you could, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you got to do it to like fully understand. I feel like that goes just this diet in general. You know, if you were to tell me four years ago, like, hey, you're going to be eating raw meat, rotten meat, you know, dairy products, you're not going to drink water. You know what I mean? Like all these things, I would have been like, you're insane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you're, I know. Yeah. That's nuts. And like, Oh, you know what? You don't believe in uh, the way that I believe in viruses. You don't believe in sickness is contagious. All these things, you know, of course, no one's going to like take us seriously. You know, it just it sounds insane because it goes against this whole like agenda, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way, man. I like I look at myself like, you know, five years ago and it's, I could never imagine myself like live streaming myself eating raw foods and like I step when I when I step outside myself and I look at the whole situation of what's going on, it's like I can't. It's hard to believe that we're in this situation, and like you know, it almost seems like there's there's another another force at play. You know what I mean? Like you know, whatever whatever you want to call it, I think there's other forces at play that kind of push people into these yeah. situations to where you you wake up and you start really waking up, and you just wake up to nutrition, and then on. Once you wake up to nutrition, you wake up to all these other things going on. And it seems like it, for me, it happened at the same time. You know, it's like raw meat was raw meat was just like one chapter in my whole awakening over the last like three years. You know, yeah, like I woke up to a lot of different stuff. And Ozinus was a big he was a big um, catalyst for that, for sure, because he what was cool about him is he didn't you know, he didn't stop at the food. He went into disease and all that stuff. And so that yeah. kind of gave me the tools I needed to go research it more on my own. And, you know, my favorite thing to do is like read his book and then go into the bibliography and read all the books that were in his bibliography. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's where like, there's some gold in Ogenus's books, but there's some real gold in those books in his bibliography too, you know, cause then you're yeah. like, Oh, now I see how Ogenus got this idea. Mm -hmm. like, you know, you see the, the original like OGs that were pushing this stuff out, you know? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I definitely need to start diving into things. It's interesting say you know you're awakening and everything i don't know if, uh, what it is um maybe it's just me or or other people i haven't really talked to a lot of people that eat this primal way um about this and i feel like it's not really talked about too much but um you know we we come in here thinking when we eat this way we're gonna we're gonna solve like majority of our problems but it for me personally i feel like this is only but like a fraction of the things that that i've uh found beneficial to me like in, on this earth which is like you know obviously if i eat this way i'm putting myself in a better position but like mentally spiritually you know what i mean like my my the, the level i had these things at where it was out of whack it wasn't in order you know i now i put my spirituality first you know above all you know what i mean but before i'm like oh i'm just gonna eat this food and then i'm never gonna feel anxious again or i'm never gonna have these problems or this that and the third and you know, I found when I kind of like balanced out from eating this way, I realized, oh, you know, spirituality is just as important, if not more important. You know what I mean? And all of these things yeah. play. And you said like whatever you want to call it, God, the higher power, whatever, you know. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of people like in the primal community don't really talk too much about that, you know. No, it's it's huge, man. It's huge, dude. And like that's why I think that's um, 
that's a big opportunity for like people like us to, to jump in there. You know what I mean? And say, Hey, this diet is definitely like the greatest of all time, but there's more, there's more important things out there. You know, this is like, um, uh, your first baby steps into like, you know, growing into the person that, and the people in the life that we're supposed to live. I and mean, like, yeah, it goes with the whole, the whole saying, you know, that they say that, you know, we're not in a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. We're in. And like, um, there's some really good arguments out there and I follow like some really interesting people like Dr. Tom Cowan and there's a couple other people out there that, uh, you know, they believe that like the origins of disease actually are probably most likely in most cases, like spiritual and origin, you know, and like they come from like trauma. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, like, yeah. yeah. So, and I think that that's true, man. Like besides like probably direct poisonings, you know what I mean? But yeah. I still I still believe that even if you're poisoned, you know what I mean? Like, let's say it's from like a certain medical procedure, put that in quotes or whatever you want to call it. Let's say you are directly poisoned. I think that if you've been like traumatized in your life somehow spiritually, that like your body has become more incapable of uh, detoxing that poison out, you know? Yeah. So I believe that, you know, I'm just speculating, but I believe that even if um, even if you're directly poisoned, I think that if you're in good spiritual health, you could probably overcome that easier than someone else that hasn't overcame their own like personal issues and stuff, you know? Yeah, no, I think, I think that's huge. You know, I always, I always try to like, you know, have gratitude before I eat and like pray about that before I adjust and like pray that it like, you know, nourishes my body to its full potential and things like that. And I notice that there is a difference, you know, if I'm like stressed out and then I'm like eating because I know I need to eat, like I'm not going to digest and utilize all the nutrients as well as I would if I was in a peaceful state, you know? So it's like those go hand in hand, but we like to look at because it's not tangible, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. I do the same thing. Like I, I never started like praying or anything until I got on this diet and like started really, like really appreciating this food, you know? Yeah. Like almost like putting myself into the mindset of like an indigenous person or like, yeah. Man, a native or something you know what i mean the way that they like cherish and, and uh, bless their food and stuff before they eat it and so mm -hmm. i started doing that man but especially after i read that book uh called the hidden messages of water by uh, masai Emoto. Mm -hmm. you know about that book where he um, I think i've heard about where they, they speak is it where they speak to like water and stuff in it yeah differently and stuff yeah yeah they like they like play music for water and they like they even do, um, and it changes like the crystal structures of it. So depending, you know, heavy metal music would give you like this really like crazy jagged crystal. And then like classical music would give you this nice, beautiful, like fractal. And then they would even like, um, show it pictures and they would like reflect the pictures back somehow in the crystal. And then they would even go as far as like pushing, uh, like intentions upon it, mm. like ne negative or positive intentions and feelings Yeah, and speaking like positive and bad words to the water. And the water would reflect like the crystal structure uh, exactly on what they like in, intended to put into it. It's really interesting, man. So, and then I combined that with like what I learned from Dr. Tom Cowan about uh, structured water, how like, you know, food contains structured water. All of our cells contain structured water. Yeah. It's not, it's not really in liquid form. It's actually in a gel form, which is like the fourth phase of water, which uh, I can't remember the doctor's name, but he wrote a whole book on that. Gerald Pollack, maybe. Mm. So he wrote a book on the fourth phase of water, which is structured water. So I started thinking about the water within the food, you know what I mean? And I was like, if I start like praying and blessing this food before I eat it, mm -hmm. and then actually put like positive intentions into the food, you know? So I know it's probably way out there for some people that haven't researched this stuff, but the research is out there, man. Like it's, yeah. they've almost proven this stuff is real. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I feel like, that's where that, that word faith and everything comes into play. And I know when people start talking um, about spirituality and everything, it kind of, for some people, it puts a sour taste in their mouth. So they just immediately closed off from it, you know, but um, I don't know, just it, with my own experience and everything, uh, I've, just, I've noticed a huge difference, a huge difference. But mm -hmm. um, I feel like once you, you acknowledge that there is something maybe beyond you, you know what I mean? Like you can't really go back from that because then you're like turning, turning away from it. You know what I mean? And it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. You just can't, for me personally, I, I feel like, like once you know, you can't go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like well, once you see it, uh, you see it everywhere basically. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So I think maybe for some, some of the newer people here that are probably thinking we're talking 
fame. Let's kind of like just go over some of like the basics, maybe just to kind of like maybe put people up to speed about like what is the primal diet. Let's just start off with that, you know? Sure. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah. So what, what, um, how did you actually first, uh, find like ogenous in the diet? Like what was your, what was your journey into that? My, like mostly like everyone else. Um, I was, keto for a while cooked keto you know what i mean and and from that i did that for a while felt pretty good and i was like wow you know i didn't have the eye crusties when i woke up my ears weren't detoxing as much and everything and i was like oh this is you know I, i'm feeling pretty good and then from there i went and cooked carnivore and i felt really good i was like whoa like this is it I found it, you know, mm -hmm. and then from there, you know, you're, you're looking into your cook stuff. You get recommended on YouTube, different things. And all of a sudden I see, um, I forget what her name is. She, she, uh, she was in like Thailand or something. I don't know. She, yeah, Astro Kanlu? yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah. eating raw and I remember watching one of the videos and I was like, she's just eating bone marrow raw and everything. And I was like, kind of revolted. I was like, Oh, I was like, how is she? doing that i was like wow but i just it didn't make sense to me, you know at the time and i was like uh -huh. just eating butter and everything but i was like she looks so good and she's like she's she making it. And i was like wow she's making sense and then i, I saw asparage too a couple uh or asparagus asparage, yeah, i don't know how, how to say it, but um a couple of his videos it was just he was making sense you know i was like so i usually like started my day when I was cooking carnivore with some liver and some bacon and eggs and cook it all. So I was like, let me just try to eat this liver raw real quick. So I, I snipped a piece of it and, and I ate it. And I was like, I had this feeling. I was like, whoa, like it just made sense right away. And like, I remember I just started like cleaning up the kitchen. You know what I mean? Like not instinctively, like I had this energy boost and I was like, whoa, like how I feel after like an energy drink or something, but it didn't, it didn't. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. just clean energy, you know, and yeah. I was just from there. I I just didn't look back. I was like, this is it. Like, I know. And then I found Ogenis's work and then I, it started really opening my mind. And then at the same time, I kind of found your work and, you know, me being, you know, lazy and wanting that instant gratification, you know, I would take your spark notes of like what the bacteria theory is, you know what I mean? And like, listen to kind of like how you summarize things and maybe put like some references to Ogenis and then I started really diving into it and taking it more seriously from there. And then mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't looked back since. Yeah. What about yeah, you? No. Um, yeah. So man, really, really similar to yours, to be honest. Uh, I, let's see, the first thing I did was, um, so I heard about the carnivore diet through Sean Baker. Yeah. And then um, that was always kind of in my mind. I was like, that just sounds cool. Like that sounds like something I could probably do. But uh, I'll keep it. I'll keep it on the back burner for now. And then a buddy, uh, that buddy that I knew said my brother just started the carnivore diet this weekend, and I was like, really? So that got me to do it. I was like, you know what? If he's gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So I started just cooking uh, steaks and stuff. But I think, I think before that, I had already quit bread. And for me, like quitting bread w was major because I think that um, I'm one of the. Um, either celiac or non-celiac gluten sensitive people. So they, that's how they phrase it. You know, I don't know what that exactly means. That probably just means I'm allergic to glyphosate, you know, or something. I assume it's probably the roundup in the bread. I don't know, but I think I'm, I was one of those people, like I'm almost positive because I had all the symptoms of celiac. Like I, I just had like a multitude of shit going on, man. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I quit bread, like all of it went away within like a week. It just, it blew my mind. Like it totally changed my life. So then I went carnivore because I was like, well, if I quit bread, what happens if I quit like, uh, you know, potatoes and oatmeal and like all this other stuff? What if I just quit it all? Vegetables. So then I went carnivore, I quit everything and went carnivore and I was cooking ribeyes on my grill outside for like a month. And uh, that was really good. And like in the morning, I was like, uh, I was frying up eggs and olive oil and I was eating like half pound of bacon for breakfast, like just tons of meat and, and fat. And then, uh, and then I found, let's see. Oh, I know what happened. This is interesting how I found this out. So, um, I was on a vegan, a vegan, uh, channel on YouTube. 
Mm -hmm. This was during my phase. This was during my vegan hate phase, which I think everybody probably goes through at some point in their yeah. life when they go into carnivore raw meat. You want to go get on vegan channels and be like, you guys are idiots. What are you doing? You know, I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah. And I totally cringe, dude, that I even was doing that to people. But uh, I was doing that. I was on a vegan channel and I was kind of giving her some shit for like eating just beans or something. Mm -hmm. And um, and someone commented below my comment and they said, oh, this must be one of Sparage's army, you know? Yeah. And I was like, what is she talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So I ultimately found this diet because of a vegan. So I went and looked up Sparage. I was like, what the hell does Sparage mean, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I found Sparage's channel. And uh, I started looking at his videos, and I was like, holy shit, this guy is interesting, man. Yeah. And uh, one of the first videos I saw of his was called uh, The Bacterium Parasite Deception, mm -hmm. which is like one of his real popular videos. And that just blew my mind, dude. Like one of those times in your life, like you were saying, where you hear the truth, like for the first time, and mm. it just like clicks. It just rings a bell. It rings true. And you're like, right. dude, this guy is speaking the truth. Holy shit. I didn't think I would hear it like this. So after I watched that Bacteria and Parasite Deception video on Sparage's channel, which I'm very grateful that he made his channel, and I've given him all sorts of gratitude and thanks, and I even sent him money, dude. I sent him, like, 40 bucks. I was like, here's some money, dude. Like, yeah. thanks for your content, man. So, and, uh, and then Ogenus was speaking on that video, and so then I was like, who is this guy speaking on the video? So I went to his notes, and I, I looked up Ogenus from there, and then it was just a snowball. And uh, literally, like, the next day, I ate my first raw steak, and uh, I, oh, that. <laughs> yeah, it was fast, dude. Like the next day I ate it and uh, felt awesome. And so that's when I started my channel. Like the, the day after that, I started my channel. I was like, I'm going to make sure I don't get sick off this before I start a channel. Didn't get sick. And I started my channel the next day. And that's literally my first video you see on the, um, it's now called the Natural Human Diet Archive channel, mm -hmm. which I actually archived all my videos because of a scam email. I got a I got an email scam that told me that they were gonna delete all my videos, or something, and it, it was like a fake, like it was supposed to be from YouTube, but it wasn't from YouTube. Mm -hmm. and I didn't figure it out till later on, so I, I got scared and I archived all my videos. But anyway, that's a whole different story. Yeah. That's why I have my archive channel. So I just started my channel, dude, and I was like, I'm just gonna document this whole journey because uh, this seems like an interesting thing to do. And just yeah, no, it definitely it, it, it helped a lot thing. of people. Yeah. I mean, I was like, it just, you know, we'll see what happens. And yeah, it's just been, it's been such a cool ride, man, because uh, I've learned literally everything I know, like from YouTube or like from my followers and subscribers. Yeah. It's a like, good. Yeah. Everybody just like, if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm eating like some sub subpar quality food, you know, like when I started out, I was chugging my food, washing it down with reverse osmosis water, like dead mm -hmm. water. Yeah. And I was eating like pasteurized butter from the store and just all the, and people were chiming in like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you know, <laughs> almost like shaming me. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to get shamed on video ever again. So I'm going to eat like <laughs> the best quality food in the entire world. So nobody can judge me. Yeah. But yeah. That's, well, that's basically what got me here, man. But same thing. I felt like the energy off of it and just, it was mind blowing. Like I even like, I was even like howling like a wolf after my first couple of steaks, dude, because it just yeah. came like primal, primal burst of energy, you know? Oh, heck yeah. Um, do, you, do you know much about cholesterol, what its role plays in our health? Is there misconceptions about cholesterol? You got any, anything on that? I got dude, I got to look into that more because that's something that has been really intriguing me lately. But um, I don't really, I'm not really, I guess, cholesterol pilled at this point. The only thing I do know is that it's not what they're telling us. That's for sure. Like what what I've heard, like the basic description that I've heard is that um, it's almost like the same thing with like um, bacteria and viruses to where they uh, they find something wrong in your body and then they go take measurements and they go, oh, OK, we got we got bacteria here. We got viruses here. So it must be the bacteria and the virus causing this issue, you know, and they, and I think the same thing happens with cholesterol, where it's like um, the analogy is, you know, if you encounter a house fire and you see firefighters putting it out are you going to assume the firefighters made the house fire right yeah. it's like no they might actually be putting out the fire and i think mm -hmm. as far as i've been educated on it i think that's that's the most basic explanation i have is that uh, i think cholesterol is there to actually help 
help the body in a way, you know? Yeah, but, I, I saw you, uh, you made a Faraday cage. And let's talk about a little bit about EMF and stuff. Cause I'm, I'm really into that too. I've been doing stuff to mitigate. Like right now I'm wearing these silver uh, EMF yep. you know, boxers and I have mm -hmm. like hoodies and blankets. Mm -hmm. I actually sleep in a Faraday tent. It's like one that's been made by this guy, Dr. McCullough, but it works, you know what I mean? Completely blocks. Yeah. And I just sleep in a tent on the ground, you know, wrapped in my EMF stuff, wearing all my, you know, and I sleep like, I get transported to another dimension, man. Like my dream, my dreams are this vivid, you know, it's me too. Yeah. And it's like, me too. I, as I'm in that Faraday cage, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. hundred percent, man. Oh yeah, dude. So yeah, my whole EMF journey, that was another like just chapter in this awakening, you know, like, um, so I heard people talking about this stuff like a few years back, you know, and like, I remember like, um, even at the beginning of my journey, when I was, I was watching like every nutrition channel that you could possibly watch. I was watching like Frank Tufano and vegetable police. And I was, oh, yeah. in, I was watching everybody you could, right. I'm trying to gather as much information and accumulate knowledge, you know, from all directions. And I slowly found out that there was only like a couple decent sources of that, but, um, I remember like Frank Tufano making a uh, EMF cage video and I was like, this dude is losing his mind. Like <laughs> this guy is totally batshit insane. He's yeah. going crazy. You know, I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what really opened me up to the EMF thing was I read that book. Uh, I read that book, uh, Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. So like, when I heard that book was coming, I heard that book was coming out before it came out. It was like going to be so big, mm -hmm. so huge, um, because it basically links EMF with all of the major like pandemics in the world. Some sort of major uh, electromagnetic event, you know, whether it's uh, introducing electricity or power lines or radar or you know sonar or um, cell phones or satellites or just whatever, any sort of electromagnetic disturbance in our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There's always been some sort of major pandemic that correlated with that. And they've even traced it back to like comets. Like there's, you know, um, cultures in the past that they thought comets were bad omens because a lot of times when comets would pass through the atmosphere, like everybody would get sick. There would be like a pandemic that followed. Mm -hmm. So there's evidence that like comets can even disturb the electromagnetic spectrum of the earth and uh, cause illness in people. It's just really interesting shit, man. But yeah. it's uh, the book is just a tome, dude. It's like 500 pages and it's uh, over 200 pages of citations in the back. So it, it's not just some dude like just uh, sitting in his house, you know, create with a tinfoil hat on writing about EMF. Like this guy had 200 pages of citations. You know, he was very, he's, he's a total genius. So I read that book and it's, uh, when you get done with that book, there's no doubt in your mind that EMF is like totally bad for us. Cause it's just, I mean, it's literally 500 pages of evidence, you know, <laughs> you can't refute it, man. So after that, I bought a uh, EMF detector. I was like, dude, I got to start like measuring my house and stuff like that. And I went around my house and sure enough, right in my bedroom, it was like super freaking high. It was mm -hmm. like off, off the charts, dude. Right where I was sleeping every single night. <laughs> So after that, then I started buying like the EMF clothes. I got like a shirt, which is uh, really expensive. That's just yeah. expensive, but I got, got a pair of boxers and a shirt. Guy, get down. What are you doing? And, uh, and then I started looking into spots in my house where I could sleep that wouldn't have EMF disturbance, you know? And I found my basement. Uh, I have a cinder block basement. I don't know if they have basements in Cali, but we have them here in Nebraska. Mm -mm, not really. Okay, yeah, it's underground and it's lined with cinder blocks. So mm -hmm. in the corner of my basement, there was almost zero EMF. So I was like, now I know where I'm sleeping, man. Mm -hmm. So I slept like a baby in my basement for a long time. And then I had, uh, I had to move out of the basement for a couple of reasons. So I moved it upstairs. And uh, so I slept like a baby, like you said, just transported to a different dimension every single night, like vivid dreams. Like, just beautiful sleep, man. You couldn't ask for better sleep. Yeah. Because it was dark, too. Dark, cold, and away from EMFs is exactly what you want. Yeah. So, so I wanted to move upstairs. And so, uh, in the meantime, before I got my cage built, I, uh, 
I had to sleep on my couch in my living room, right? So I slept one night on my couch in my living room, and I got the worst sleep I've had in, like, two and a half years, dude. Yeah. So, like, so that was, like, kind of my control study. Like, you know, I'm sleeping outside of EMF, sleep like a baby. Uh, one night I sleep in EMF, and I sleep terrible. So uh, I went upstairs. I built that cage literally the next day. And I was like, I got to build this, man. So build the cage, and then um, and just – it was just like I was sleeping in the basement again. So, like, like, so people out there, if you want to get away from EMFs, one way to do it, relax. Uh, one way to do it is to sleep in your basement if you have a cinder block basement, because a lot mm -hmm. of times you're, you're blocked from your neighbor's Wi-Fi and stuff. But Faraday cage, dude. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I discovered it. Yeah. No, I I just basically the same way. Just kind of. You know, I, I I watched some of Frank's videos too. He's he yeah he, he makes some good points sometimes. You know, he can be yeah he's not all bad. Yeah, he he's just he's a cool character. He's definitely unique. Um, oh yeah, I guess I can show you uh, some of my high meat collection real quick. Yeah, let's see it. I have to keep it outside because it's just putrid. I bet. I'm gonna let my dogs out while we're at it too. I keep it in. I agree. Sure, buddies. Come outside. I'm going to let my dogs out real quick. Go outside. Come on. Go do your job. Like cherries, like sweet chocolate or something. So I, got, I got a couple. I got brain. It looks like complete. That's, that's your brain right there? Yeah, that's brain right here. Here's some liver I got going. It's not ready yet, though. That's liver? Yeah, here's some more brain. I'm gonna, I'll probably drink some of it on live. Oh, and I, I had mentioned um, my nail polish is toxic. Yeah, I know it is. I I make music for a living, so it's you can't, you can't make music without nail polish, bro. You can't make it without nail polish. <laughs> uh, this is lamb brain and pancreas. I'm I'm letting it go a little bit more. Nice. Yeah, but I guess I'll eat some right now and. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'll join you here in a second. High meat party, dude. This is what this is my dream. I know it's more beneficial on a on an empty stomach, but I didn't even think of that. I, dude, yeah, hundred percent, man. And like the only time I ever remember to do it is like when I'm streaming, like after I eat a meal. Yeah. Um, it doesn't it doesn't digest a hundred percent right when you eat a meal right before it. I can say that like for sure. But it's not bad. It's not bad. But if I eat Don't little... ask if it's all unrefrigerated, do I air it out? Yeah. So when you first start it out, you want to do it like every three to four days until that bacteria starts to build up. But honestly, once it gets to a certain level, you can let it go for a lot longer. Like I'll forget it for like a, like a like two weeks to a month. Uh, yeah. Like they say the bacteria stops growing and it stops like evolving from that. Like honestly. Mine just keeps going. <laughs> like, I don't. Sometimes I don't put it on very airtight, and like, there's little like it looks like like a fly laid some like, on the rim. <laughs> uh huh. You know, but they died, or but like I don't care. I'll I'll eat it. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. I noticed that too with mine, man. Like I would air it out a lot at the beginning, and mm -hmm. then uh, I just forgot about it. This this liver I have is about um it's about a year and a half old, fermented. And uh, I just forget about it, dude, for like two months. And I'm like, shit, I haven't aired my hymen out. But it doesn't, I don't know, it's weird. You just, I think after a certain point, just intuitively, it's like you don't need to air it out. Mm -hmm. Honestly, too, because like you can't really see my irises, but around the iris of mine, I kind of have like, uh, so my eyes are blue, but they're kind of green, ageless. So I like, I have a lot, quite a bit of toxicity. I don't know if it's like genetic or from just my time of eating, you know? But, um, yeah. So around the iris right here, um, it's kind of like a copperish color, but it's fading a little bit. So, like, that means that I'm probably the best at digesting a lot of things, you know what I mean? So it's been said I should eat a lot of more fermented foods. And I've noticed that it digests way easier when my milk is fermented. So I oh, would really? Yeah, I would probably be eating, like, a lot of like, my food from but I also eat a lot of oysters. I eat like, like lately I've been eating like 20 oysters a day. <laughs> awesome. You're lucky, man. That's the best food in the world. 
Oh, wow. yeah. We have this place called Santa Monica Seafood here, and they have, like, oysters, and they're, they're all – they're just the best oysters I've ever had. There's just no taste, bitter taste at all. It's just fresh, and – I'll get you know some more like a buck a piece. Like I, I don't, I'll spend the twenty five dollars to get get them, you know, and I'll just eat them on a day to day basis. Because I was just lot, listening to Ajin, and he said that oysters are like the best way to detox heavy metals. And it's not the same as like the vegetable juices with the cilantro because like that mm -hmm. has more side effects. And this one's like kind of like a clean detox where it was mm -hmm. just out, you know. Yep. All right. Let's see if I. Uh... I'll describe. So it smells like, it smells like sweet, like, like olives, like a little olivey cherry smell. Is that the brain? Yeah, this is the brain. Um, okay. it smells like olives, cherry. Uh, it's got like a sweet smell to it, but also smells like a little bit charred, like charred like barbecue. I don't know. It's weird. Really? Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty liquid. More than a lot. I might just try to drink some. Maybe. Yeah, it goes. Let's see what it tastes like. So it's got, it tingles on my tongue. It's got like that, like fizzy, you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like, like it's got bacteria in it for sure. Like it's got that fizzy soda feeling, you know, or like if you've ever had kombucha or something. Mm -hmm. got that fizzy fizzy taste honestly it's not bad at all like really yeah it, t it tastes pretty good to me mm. like i haven't uh <clears throat> i haven't tried the brain yet i've tried um the weirdest one that i ever tried was tongue you ever fermented tongue before i've never even eaten tongue before <laughs> oh really tongue's pretty yeah. good man um fermented tongue was the weirdest it was almost like a sharp it was like spicy, like super spicy, dude. Yeah. And it turned into like a cream, like this spicy cream. Mm. It was really weird, man. I was like, wow, that's strange. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely spicy. Yeah. I, I I definitely feel different already. <laughs> from, yeah? You know, yeah, like just makes you more optimistic. Like mm -hmm. things all right, you know? <laughs> Agreed, dude. Yeah. Agreed, man. I get that feeling all the time when I eat high meat. I like to, um, I'm going to eat some in a little bit, but yeah, I like to do it on stream when I'm, when I'm talking to people or conversating. Cause it just seems like, um, it just seems like that's the way to do it. It's, I think it's supposed to be like a social thing, you know, come on guys. It could, it could be a powerful experience. I think if definitely want to eat more. Um, have you ever been experimenting with, a? The teremin clay at all uh, this stuff um no, not in a long time i think when i first got into the diet i was kind of like trying everything mm -hmm. just experimenting with different stuff but i got some clay i think at one point and then uh i just forgot about it dude you know i was feeling so good on the diet i was like man i gotta you know focus on this for now but i totally forgot about it but it sounds like a good idea would you just like drink it so um, I I just make it into like a like a plaster. I just take mm -hmm. a spoonful whenever I, I drink milk, like kind of on. A, and I guess it just pulls out toxins and it gives minerals and stuff like that. I don't know. I just wanted to try it out because, um, I don't know. For me, I'm like, why am I juicing all this stuff? Like, why would I eat clay? But I guess if we lived in a perfect world, you know, without all this toxicity, we would be able to just get away with eating meat and raw. Mm -hmm. But it's not the case so yeah i think ogenous implemented all these things based off of the environment we're in today you know, yeah so we're not getting all these minerals you know what i mean it's been depleted oil and like we're not able to detox all of these like heavy metals and everything so we need to be able to juice like celery and cilantro and specific to like get all this about i don't know i want to start implementing um the hot baths, but I'm not, I just not, I, I need to gain more pounds. <laughs> you know, I don't have enough fat on my body. I don't think to be, do that. In a yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I worry. Uh, the only thing I worry about with baths is, um, like fluoride in the water. Yeah. hundred um, percent. I think someone said that Ogenus has like a, some kind of remedy for that. 
or I don't know if it's like mixing milk in the water or something else that can like help detox the fluoride out. But I worry about that. You know, I'm like, what's, is it, is it better off? Am I better off just not taking a bath or am I better off taking a lymphatic bath and a bunch of fluoride? Like, I don't know. What yeah. That. Counterintuitive, but yeah, I guess there's like specific ways you can do it to counteract all that toxicity in the water. But, um, yeah, I've heard a lot of people that have been doing it, um, just talking with them and everything. And they're like, these baths are like the real g deal. They're like, no joke. They're like, the detox is like crazy. You end up detoxing right away. You know what I mean? And they're like, some people get kind of scared because they're like, whoa, like I didn't realize it was going to detox me like that. And they say they can like smell stuff coming out of the skin while they're doing it. And like, oh, wow. I was talking to this one guy and he was like, yeah, I used to take this certain acne cream medicine on my face. And when I was younger and he's like, I started taking these baths and he's like, I could smell it coming out of my skin. And he's like, that was a year ago. Oh no shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Holy crap. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, but, yeah. Now that you say that, I remember, I think one of my uh, followers or friends on Instagram, he hit me up like in the last couple months at some point, and he told me that he was doing the lymphatic baths and he got some like hardcore freaking detox, like mm. debilitating detox from it. He's like, I got to stop doing this. He's like, it's just too detoxifying, you know? Sometimes I feel like that way, especially like lately nowadays, um, it can be kind of like discouraging when you're eating this way sometimes because the detox is just, you know, if you're doing you know, the recommended, that uh, the recommendations that Ajahn is you start to detox, especially when it gets colder for me. Like I've been noticing, like, I've been like, Oh, like I'm feeling it. And like, he recommends, like, if you're feeling too much detox to like eat a cook, you know what I mean? And it'll kind of slow it down. But I'm just like, I just want to keep it going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I kind of, I, I regularly do like a cooked meal, like a couple times a month. Cause uh, mm -hmm. just for whatever, man, I don't know. I just do like, um, when I like go out to lunch or something like that. So yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. But, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't really notice, I don't really notice, like, I didn't really notice hardcore detox, like daily detox symptoms when I first started the diet or anything. Like, uh, I think I was in, in decent enough shape when I started the diet. Like I didn't let my body go to complete shit. Like some people, you know? Um, so, but I got those really bad detoxes in that first year, you know, where it came in the form of like a flu, you know what I mean? So like, I think that's just the way my body's geared up. Like I feel like really good all the time. And then eventually, you know, eventually like through cycles, I'll get like a really bad flu or cold. And then it just, you know, detoxes out. Mm -hmm. so, you know, changes in your irises at all. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I started taking pictures of my eyes like two years ago or something like that, you know, because I noticed like when I was a kid, I had like really blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And some somewhere along the way, I'd have to look at my old pictures and stuff. Somewhere along the way, probably when I hit puberty, honestly, like they started going more green. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, they just like stayed kind of greenish, dude, like uh, greenish blue. And I started learning about iridology and ogenous and how, you know, there's lymphatic rings, yellow rings in the eyes that make them green and stuff. And mm -hmm. that was really intriguing to me. Uh, so I started taking pictures of them. And I got some on my Instagram. Um, yeah. They're definitely going more light, for sure. <laughs> like lighter. Mm -hmm. They seem less green, like more, more of like a lighter blue now. Yeah. But, I've been, I, I saw that you were taking pictures of your eyes. Um, I started doing that, too, just to kind of track myself. And uh, over the summer, I started noticing my eyes were turning blue on the outside. Like, and they were, like, super green, like, a year ago. But huh. then after this crazy detox... They, they got more green again. I've been, oh, no shit. Yeah, I'll, I dumped something out for sure. You know what I mean? But I, uh -huh. I don't know stuck in the lymph or, or mm -hmm. what. But, um, yeah, I noticed that the, the bluer parts after I got sick, it, it was green again. Like, but I was like, I was a little discouraged. I was like, what happened? I was like, I, I thought they were turning blue. You know what I mean? But I, I just trust the process, you know, like trust my body. That's what it's going to yeah. be. Yeah, it's just amazing. There's like no research on it, dude. You know, like I went on that doctor's show and that was one of the things that I brought up. I was like, yeah, it looks like my eyes are changing, you know, to a lighter color. Mm -hmm. And they just said, all they said was, was that's just from aging. Your eyes get lighter when you age. And I was like, 
I don't know. <laughs> about that one, dude. I mean, we're talking about just like a couple year time span here. We're not talking about like uh, 20 years. My eyes are lighter, you know. Mm -hmm. Just a couple years it happened, you know. So, yeah, I think there's something to it, man. And it makes sense when you actually look inside your eyes. When you get real close to it and take like a picture or get in the mirror, mm -hmm. you can see those like, they're like aberrations. You know what I mean? They're like uh, things that aren't supposed to be there, you know. Yeah. Like I have like brown specks in one of them. But you got any of those brown specks? Yeah, I think that's like they, they consider that like a drug spot, like from maybe like antibiotics or certain certain drugs, you know. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah, I have one um on my right eye, but um I have a lot of like I have a lot of uh like weak constitutions in some areas, like where like the spokes, you know, the the threads aren't like as tight together. They're like kind of yeah. open. Yep. Or yeah. that, that yeah. like you, you know, you might have weak lungs or something's wrong with the lungs or uh -huh. like that. But I actually uh, just talked to this girl. She does iridology and she's just waiting for me to take a high quality picture of my eyes. But she's going to just read me, you know, basically what's going on with my inside. I can kind of like structure my diet around that and start trying to relax or do whatever I need to do from there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting shit, man. I got a book on iridology that I still got to read, but it's just that stuff is fascinating, dude. Because mm -hmm. like, it's it, the reason it happens like that is because it's something about the way that we develop as like uh, as embryos, mm -hmm. like the, the eyes, like the neurological system with the eye is like connected with everything in the body as an embryo, and it just like unfolds. Mm -hmm. And so it's just interesting how it's all connected, like your eye is connected to every, every, uh, thing in your body. That's just mind blowing, dude. Dude, I know it's, it's nuts. It, you can get so deep into these things. And I can't, I think that kind of like ties me back around to it. Um, just like the state of the world, like where the world's at right now and where the majority of people's, uh, perspective is and everything like that. How do you on a day to day kind of like get through your day with like, like just being in like serenity? You know, and just acceptance and everything. Do you find it like hard, you know, running into family members that, you know, still think a certain way or anything like that? Like, how do you cope with that? Or has that been an issue with you at all since you've like started eating this way? Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess since I started eating and just, I mean, honestly, man, like this really it goes with my nature, and that's why it was so easy for me to adopt all of these changes and just uh, kind of. Um, ride ride the wave of awakening you could say because mm -hmm. uh, i've always been uh really um like anti-authority um i've always been a bit of like a rebel i guess you could say and like never really trusted authority uh didn't listen to my parents at all didn't listen to teachers like didn't trust police didn't trust uh the government that was something i woke up to later on but mm -hmm. so i just didn't really trust i never trusted authority to begin with and so it was easier for me to kind of adopt all this stuff because it was just kind of in my nature, man, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so when it comes to like other people, like not seeing things the way that I see things, like I'm just kind of, um, I just don't care, I guess, you know, I just don't care what other people think. Really, mm -hmm. It's just really that simple, man. And like, I definitely like, I get part of that, like from my mom, dude, because my mom is, she's like very similar to me in that respect. Like she's, uh, she's a lot like me, but, um, she's pretty based. But, um, so yeah, I mean, it kind of runs, yeah, it's cool, man. Like it runs in the family. And, uh, so I just don't really pay much attention to it, dude. Like, it's just who I am. You know, I'm just being, mm -hmm. I'm just being my authentic self. And if people don't like it, then, then whatever, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm basically like a, a lone wolf anyways. That's like my nature, you know? Yeah. I think so, um, where this is kind of coming from for me is you know, we figured this out and all of a sudden we want to help all the people we love, you know, mm -hmm. I think the biggest lesson I've learned through this is like, and it's just a life lesson in general. It's like, even though you want to help the people you love, you know, if it's not ultimately up, up to them, they're going to make their own decisions, you know, yeah. and, you know, it, sometimes you got to watch people like continue to use a certain way that might harm them or, you know, this and that. And Dude, yeah, tough pill to swallow. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man. Like sometimes, um, yeah, that's like what I like to call like the ultimate paradox of this, right? Like you yeah. discover this diet that can, um, 
give you a life completely free of disease and like, uh, and, and give you peace, you know, if you adopt other certain things in your life with this diet. And like, you try to show it to other people and they're like, they don't accept it. So especially your loved ones, you know, and, and yeah, I think that's the whole, that's the whole trick is that like, you have to get used to basically watching other people suffer, you know, like you watch people suffer and die, basically. Mm. Like, and I think that's, I've gotten that advice from a couple of people I follow on YouTube, but cause there's that, yeah, we struggle with that. You know, it's like, I want to help people. I want to help my brother. Yeah. I want, you know, I want to help my grandpa and all this stuff, but sometimes you just got to watch people suffer. It sounds totally cold hearted, but what else are you going to do? You know, like, cause you're going to suffer, you know what I mean? Watching it. Right. Yeah. It. yeah, exactly, man. So, and so I just take, from, what I take from that is I just feel like even more blessed that like I found this way of living, you know? hundred percent, you know, that's exactly where I, where I, where I'm at too. And how I feel it's like, you know, I've been given the, the opportunity to become aware of this way of eating, you know, and I think it's for a reason, you know what I mean? And I, it may not be to help, you know, the one that I love dearest, you know what I mean? Maybe it's not for them, but, you know, it's for a reason. And I just feel so grateful, you know, and like, I just have a lot of gratitude because it's like, it was brought into my life for a reason for something, you know? Everything. But, yeah. Everything's for a reason, dude, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I saw you recently post uh, something about drugs and alcohol. So, did you partake in drugs and alcohol growing up or anything? Oh yeah, hell yeah, dude. I definitely been been around the block with that stuff, man. Like, um, I wasn't really a big drinker. I mean, I kind of, I basically like I've tried everything, you know. You can yeah. Imagine, like, besides, I don't think I've ever shot up heroin, but yeah, I've tried, I've tried everything, you know what I mean? And, but yeah. basically I was like a really big, like cannabis user. Like I just basically cannabis, like every day for like 15 years, basically. Yeah. But there was some other stuff that came along with that too, you know, like, um, just other types of just pills and just things like that, that kind of floated around and made their way, made their rounds. And, um, but, but mostly it was just cannabis for me. That was kind of like my crush for a long time. Mm -hmm. and uh which i think is like a powerful medicine if it's used properly you know and it's respected but i wasn't respecting it i was just abusing the shit out of it for a while yeah so i just you know it put me into a fog and uh i had no like self-discipline and self-control or anything like that and mm -hmm. then that obviously um that coincides you know i know with like the food addiction and stuff like that you know because if you can't control your your um impulses in one area they're going to trickle into other areas so i basically had no like impulse control for a while there you know yeah and uh yeah it was it was a bit of an issue like i think it just <clears throat> it didn't really like do any real physical damage to my body or anything but it's just you know like socially you know what i mean when you're just spending a lot of time just like smoking weed and stuff like that it can really like uh, prevent you from other opportunities in life and stuff like that. So that's why I decided to step away from it. And I had periods in my life, like from 20 to 23, where I was completely sober. Like I didn't use any, you know, cannabis or alcohol or anything. Mm -hmm. So during like, those are arguably like formative years. I had like some really good sobriety in there. And so yeah. I always knew that I wanted to get back to that. Yeah. And that was like having that sobriety ultimately like pushed me into wanting to start partying again too. So that I like partied even harder after that. And then I was like, all right, I need to get back to where I was then. Like, I just, I feel so good sober, dude. Like, yeah, 100%. clear headed and just like the whole, the whole cannabis thing is just like, it's crazy, man. Like it was, it's just insane. The whole psyop with cannabis that's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I have a whole, a whole thing. So I, uh, I used to use cannabis a lot, but you know, my, my, my advice was I, I drink alcohol for a long time, you know, just with my friends out partying, you know, you know, it's yeah. so acceptable with kind of what I do for a living. And, right. you know, and at a point my life, you know, started becoming pretty like unmanageable. And like, I noticed that it was taking a, a big toll on me. And, um, I, for a while and, and, and everything would be great but ultimately i found um, if i rely on my my will you know what i mean 
it ultimately leads me into the same place. So like I've had a, I have a relationship now with a higher power and the more connection I have with that, the more I find that I'm liberated from that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's awesome. I mean, like you said, it feels great being sober because, um, you have to face life on life's terms now, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. as before we you yeah. might food or to cannabis or whatever it may be for you or anyone else. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the quick scapegoat and like we're immediately like removed from ourselves, and we don't have to handle life on life's terms. But now, you know, being sober, you know, I, I, it's hard and it's difficult, but it's um, it's awesome at the same time because I'm actually able to feel things. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, know, I noticed you had been talking about it. So I was just interested to see like where you were at with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Still sober, dude. Uh, like I quit, I quit cannabis two years ago, man, <clears throat> after basically a daily 15 year habit. It was amazing. Wow. I never thought I'd get away from it, but it was one of the, yeah, it was just, um, like we use it for an escape. You know what I mean? I think that's what happens is you mm -hmm. use it for an escape. It's a medicine at first and then you use it to escape. And like you said, man, it's just, there's nothing better than just being like, uh, in the moments and like being aware of everything, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, ultimately where you want to be and like you can't hide <clears throat> you can't hide from stuff you can't hide from yourself mm -hmm. you can't you can't hide from reality <clears throat> like the only way out is going through it and eventually you just have to go through it man you know i know it seems so simple but i don't know humans we we tend to make things so difficult and more complicated than they need to be you know and it kind of goes back to the way that we eat you know <laughs> like mm -hmm. we all make it so simple but yeah i don't know we're flawed <laughs> we have we have a lot of flaws yeah, dude, we're all pretty corrupted, man. And it's, uh, it's generational, you know, it all comes down from the family line. And like, you know, just uh, grandparents corrupt the parents, the parents corrupt the children, the children grow up and become parents and then corrupt their children. And it just, it happens over and over and over again. And it's only like a really unique situation or a unique person that wakes up in the middle of that generational trauma and goes, you know, what? I'm gonna put a stop to this shit. And uh, mm -hmm start eating healthy and like become sober and start, you know, looking at the world for what it is. And yeah, I think, I think a lot of people deal with that, man. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, th these are like conversations I feel like our community of people that eat this way don't really talk about. It's like, you know, we, we can pro progress so much physically with the way that we eat. But like recently this year, you know, I've been a, a addressing, you know, past traumas, resentments, things like that. And mm -hmm. going back and being able to, to make an amends or like have a conversation with someone and be able to like lift that tie that you didn't even realize you were holding. You know, I, I like to use that as a reference of like, you have a rock full of pockets, you know, and then you don't realize how much it's weighing you down. And like when you, you're forgiven or you forgive someone, you're able to take that, that rock out and, and remove it from your pocket and you feel lighter, you know, and mm -hmm. that's, you know, with relationships and, whether it's family, friends, whatever it may be, but you know, going back and having those conversations and everything, you realize that, whoa, that was affecting me way more than I thought it was. You know, what you I mean? know. yeah, I, 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 I've been doing that lately, and it's it's changed my life 100. percent It's crazy, man. <laughs> good, it's good, man. Yeah, that's a good thing to do, dude. Like just going around and you know, like forgiveness is huge. You know what I mean? Like just the simple concept of forgiving people that have. Uh, betrayed you or just done things to you you know what i mean like that's huge man just letting that shit go yeah. and like forgiveness goes along with like compassion you know like having compassion for other people even though they may they may be like super fucked up people you got to understand that like they're they're um a lot of people are just like you in different stages you know like they were they were you like five or ten years ago and just because they're at that point now it doesn't make them any different from you so it's like just got to have compassion for people no matter no matter how flawed they are you know or how fallen they are and like it really helps man like not getting angry like dropping anger was like huge for me too like i always you know we get um just you know frustrated and angry at things and like that was very huge for me man like yeah forgiving parents forgiving your mother forgiving your father forgiving you know anybody in your family like your brothers siblings and stuff like that's major dude and like the reason people shy away from that or they like tune out from that is because it's the most powerful thing and it's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Because you got to drop your ego. Like this, you know, we're taught like um, when we grow up, we're just taught to like form this ego in front of the world, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
the ego is so destructive, dude. Like, it's the one thing that prevents us from like forgiving people and like dropping our guard and our, our pride and like just like letting things go. And like, mm -hmm. I think that that in, in itself can create disease. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. harboring, harboring resentment, harboring anger inside of your body, I think can create things like cancer and stuff like that, you know? And like, yeah. Ogenus didn't really go too deep into that stuff, but he did in his book, he kind of touched on little, um, he kind of danced around things like that. Like when he would talk about people, uh, when you crave uh, like sugary foods or sweets, you're actually craving like a sweet person mm. in your life, you know, which I thought was really interesting. Like, yeah. I, so, or really, him. What's that? Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, I was just going to say like, just everything is tied in together in ways that we don't understand. Like the physical, the physical and the metaphysical and like you can't talk about reality unless you talk about the metaphysical like the untangible the unforeseen forces in the world you know like like tom cowan says like um like uh like uh like love right like um he asked his professor like do you love your wife with all your heart and he said yeah and he said okay um if you if you take your heart out and dissect it on a table you're gonna find something called love in there and he was like no but he was trying to get to the point to where they're taught in medical school that like everything is physical. Like everything can be described with matter and physical and stuff like that. But he's like, you're not going to find love inside of your heart. So where does that come from? Yeah. You know? So that's just like, that ties in with disease and everything, man. Like these scientists are trying to find a way to um, describe diseases and solve diseases in physical ways. But a lot of it's untangible, dude. Mm -hmm. you know? No completely there's there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle a lot of are oh, you eating some high i gotta eat some too then mm -hmm. that looked good though <clears throat> oh, this stuff this stuff is delicious dude yeah mine just looks like oatmeal or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is about a year and a half old and it tastes like um it tastes like uh like six years aged cheddar cheese really yeah it tastes like some severely aged cheese man this one was in the fridge. You see how it's not, I put this, in, it's just uh, beef brain. Mm -hmm. Now it's not mushy. This one's outside of the fridge. I, I just forgot. Yeah. I'm going to leave it yeah. out. Let's see. Oh, that yours tastes like cheese. It tastes like, it tastes like sharp cheddar cheese, dude. Yeah. This tastes like olives, like cherries and with a hint of barbecue. I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain. It's weird. It's it's good, good, busy, though. Sounds good. Hi, meat party, y'all. Yeah. Kind of pet me up a little bit. You like so what about um, supplements? Do you mess with any kind of like glandular supplements or anything like that? So I just try to stick like just to raw foods right now. I'm, I'm a, just very weary of like if it seems too good to be true, then it, it probably. So, well, um, yeah. I, I just. I've strayed away from it, but I, I do try to like get as much done as I can and ground and do things like that. But I don't know. Um, I haven't found a supplement. Like I, I would say this is a supplement, right? Just Terramin clay. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I've been experimenting with that a little bit, but um, not really. What about? Um, every once in a while, I get like um, these thyroid glandular supplements oh okay but i don't know if i'd recommend it dude because when i look on the ingredients and this is only because like it's it's kind of hard to get like uh thyroid glands because mm -hmm. basically i'm trying to like heal my body from like all different angles like yeah I'm just, I'm just assuming that my body has sustained a bunch of damage over the years so i'm trying to find different ways to to heal it just in case and like if you look on the ingredients dude it's got like Okay, it says gelatin, microcrystalline cellulose, which is plant fiber, mm. uh, magnesium stearate, silica. What is silica? Is that in glass or sand or something? I thought that was like, uh, like a rubber or something. Oh, okay, maybe. And then this is the one that gets me, dude. Medium, medium chain triglycerides oil, palm. So it's got like palm oil in it. Mm. So, <clears> I'd rather like 20 <laughs> What's that? I said I'd rather eat like twenty oysters. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know if I'd recommend it because when I eat it on like an empty stomach in the morning, I can feel like something digesting down there. It's not good. So I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if I'd recommend that. And then the other thing that I mess around with is this uh, iodine Lugol solution, iodine. Mm -hmm. So I just experiment with it just mm -hmm. to see if it will make a difference, you know, because I don't yeah. just assume everything I read is correct. And I don't I just assume that because they tell me there's iodine in my food that it's going to be in my food. So yeah, I just try it out. I put a drop on my wrist every day for like a few weeks and rub it in and see if I notice anything. And yeah, I mean, that's good. That's a way to grow. You know, we can't just take anything verbatim, you know what I mean? Just be yeah. like the truth, you know, we have to yeah. be able to be flexible. Yeah, totally, dude. And like every once in a while, I'll, I'll even add like salt to my potato, like mineral salt, mm. just, just to see, like, you know, like, because you don't know how good you can feel until you feel it, right? So it's like, yeah. sometimes you don't see your health is declining until it's declined really far. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, just what if, what if I am missing salt in my diet? Or what if I am going through some sort of sodium deficiency? And so I'll just try to add salt in my potato, but I don't really notice much, dude. It just, it changes the flavor, but I don't need, I don't need extra salt, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't use salt at all anymore. Um, and I feel, I feel pretty good. I don't ever have any muscle spasms or anything like that. But I remember when I was eating cooked carnivore, I was salting everything and I felt great too. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it, it's just, who knows, you know, um, I think just go off of what your body feels like, what feels best in your body. Sometimes not too, because this, this, this way of eating causes a lot of detox. And there's a lot of times where I'm like, I know if I just like ate something else right now, it would stop this detox, you know? <laughs> But I don't know. I just take things with a grain. So have you ever eaten um, like uh, adrenals or anything like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, sure. dude. dude yeah. Right. Adrenals. <laughs> else, dude. Yeah. My buddy, uh, my buddy, uh, Lamana Fitness, Nick Lamana. I was just doing a consultation with him this morning, man, and um, he told me he ate raw, fresh adrenals from a deer, and then he ate the raw testicles right after that. And he said it was the highest he'd ever been in his whole life. Yeah, I, I would imagine, man. Insane. So, I, Josh Josh Rainer Gold said, uh, I got hyponatremia. I added salt back in and feel much better. Hey, man. So, I think, and that, and that kind of coincides with, uh, see, Ogenus never said nobody should ever eat salt, right? Yeah. And no, he recommends it to some people. Right, for some people, for I think he it was for um, was it for adrenal? He said it was for adrenal yeah. insufficiency. Yeah, he he said adrenal fatigue. So he said basically, if you can't get out of bed, mm -hmm. you know. But like, but he said like a couple grains. He was, yeah, you know, like was literally crazy. Yeah, that's, it's just, that's powerful in the human body. I, I I don't know. That's insane, dude. But he would say like a couple grains would get people back to the levels they need to be, and I'm just like. That's just insane, dude. But I and I believe it. So it just goes with the whole like you shouldn't be dogmatic about anything. Like you run into, I'm sure you ran into primal dieters. You know, what I mean, they're like, you know, <laughs> salt. You should never use salt. Or like, what are you doing drinking water? You should never drink water. And it's like, yeah, it's like, dude, Ozan just said in his lectures that he like drank a cup of water a day. Him drinking the girl, the Gerlsteiner or whatever, however you say it. In his yeah, he, he drank water. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like these are like. It's almost like the like the mandala effect or something. It's like you listen to his lectures and then all of a sudden you think you heard one thing mm -hmm. and then you realize later on that he said something totally different. And if you read his book, there's like you can get something that different out of his book every time you read it because there's so much shit in there, man. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And we're all different. We're all in different processes in our life and our body and our healing journey. Mm -hmm. What I might need might be different from what you might need. He just gave us a basic foundation to work from. Sure. You know can't like talk to him one-on-one -on -one, so we have to use his lectures and things like that to kind of like figure out what might be best for us and i don't know also too listening to other people too as well and you know thing and finding what works best for you i think he was really geared towards people that were like at the end of the road and they're trying to you know reverse their disease and they had nowhere else to go so he was like all right this isn't the things that you need to do but you know some of us aren't at the end of our road, you know what I mean? And maybe we're not looking to detox like as severely. Maybe we're just going to have our quality of life be a little bit better and, you know, do different things. So it just changes. Sure. Yeah, dude. So <clears throat> I think I probably, 
got like another 10 or 15 minutes left on my battery. So do you want to, um, do you want to take like, do you want to go through some questions in the chat? Right yeah, now? yeah, let's do that. There's some people that got some questions, man. So, um, let's see. Josh made a comment on the salt thing. He said, if our food was much higher in minerals before, it would explain the deficiencies we have now, even if you eat perfectly primal. Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes sense. And I've heard that people also say that uh, since we're not eating the, like the blood fresh off the animal, we're not getting a lot of sodium out of it. Yeah, I would, I would just contribute. Maybe try uh, this clay, you know what I mean? Um, it's, got, it's got calcium, iron, magnesium, sodium, selenium, manganese, copper, phosphorus, zinc, potassium, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff in, um, in it. And he, he just suggests like put it in like your milk or whatever. Um, that might help out if you're feeling like that, that fatigue and you're already feeling that need for salt, you know, it says yeah. there's, and, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Someone almighty paladin said, what's your guy's opinion on cane sugar? You got any comments on that? I personally don't need it and I, I haven't, uh, or, or, or used it at all. So I, I can't really speak on it. Okay. Yeah. Me neither, man. Um, but I did someone. I thought someone said yesterday that Ogenus was uh, juicing sugar cane. He was drinking juiced sugar cane, which sounds delicious. Right? Yeah, that's probably really good. I really good. I mean, it sounds fairly <laughs> natural to me. What is that, honey? Yeah, it's this honey. Um, I order it from this this farm off Etsy. It's this little like family farm, and it's the best honey I've ever had in my life, man. It's so that looks that looks like that kind of lighter, creamy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, it's. It's it looks so, almost golden. Dude, it, yeah, it is good stuff. It's so good. Um, if you're interested in it, it's it's really good price and she's super nice. Family is um I'll give you the link to their to her so you could try it out for you. Yeah, I'd like to try so, it. I've only basically eaten like one kind of honey in the last three years, so I'd like uh, to try different stuff. It, like it tastes like floral, like you could taste what the bees were pollinating, like it's so good. Mm-hmm. Um Someone else, Raw Ancestral, made a comment. He said, most people think salt is sodium. That's a huge misconception for sure. Yeah. A lot of people forget that sodium is like a – it's like a – sodium – I went down the sodium rabbit hole like a couple months ago. Yeah. Looking it up. That's an interesting one, dude, because it's like this highly reactive metal. Like when you go on like – go on Wikipedia. I encourage everybody to look this up. Look up what sodium is. It's not going to be what you think it is at all. It's this – freaking weird metal that like <laughs> it reacts to everything like even oxygen and water like whatever you expose it to it just like blows up it's really weird man like so and then you just get into the whole uh sodium rabbit hole because you can combine sodium with all of these different types of elements and create all these different kinds of salts and stuff it's really complicated shit man yeah it's, and they use it for all sorts of different kinds of things. But, yeah, basically, yeah, salt is not sodium. Salt is usually, like, sodium uh, combined with, like, potassium or something. It's, it's usually combined with some other element, you know, to make it a, uh, a crystal. So it's, so it's bound. Sodium has to be bound with something. Otherwise, it's, like, highly reactive. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. Someone else said... Uh, Nick, Nick Sophos said, Hey, can you talk about creatinine levels up on higher protein diets? Creatine levels on higher protein diets. Yeah. He said creatine in, but I don't think that's a word, right? I think he meant creatine. I don't know. It probably is. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. I know there's like different forms of like creatine and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, I'm sure a higher protein diet is going to elevate your creatine. I don't see anything wrong with that. Like back when I used to lift weights, I used to supplement creatine and I used to feel really good on that stuff. Yeah. Like, beneficial. Mm -hmm. It's, I know it's in, you know, red meat and I don't know if you eat raw red meat, you're, you're naturally just going to be more muscular. And yeah, like, for, for if sure. you while you notice too, when you start eating this way, you're like, I don't, I'm not even working out as much as I like used to when I used to work out. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking good and I feel strong, you know? Yeah, dude. When you eat, like I was eating like three pounds of red meat a day. It was like putting armor on my body, man. Yeah. Shoulders on my upper chest were just getting just stocky. 
you know, because it's like the meat and the protein have to go somewhere, you know. Uh, someone else said, Trev1021 says, do you eat raw pork? I have, yeah, a couple times. It's yeah. pretty good. Like, I've eaten uh, basically like raw bacon. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty good. I've gotten it from where I order food from. Um, but it's not like my favorite. Mm hmm All right. Um, let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Oh, okay. Blood, Blood Sport says, uh, how would cannabis be a psyop? So I don't think the, obviously the cannabis, the plant is a psyop, but, um, cause I think everything, you know, plants are neither good nor bad, but, um, they're very neutral, but, uh, I think the way that they're pushing it is very interesting. So they're starting to push it on everybody. They're starting to sell it on every street corner. They're starting to, you know, give it to kids. Now you got all these CBD infused stuff. CBD, everything is CBD now, CBD this, CBD that. How are they extracting this CBD? Are they using toxic solvents? You know, are you getting chemicals in your body? Like, it's just, yeah, CBD solves everything. Well, it's like, well, how about like changing your diet and like, you know, stop eating uh, potato chips and donuts and shit. And you might not feel like shit every day, you know? So I think it's a psyop in that respect where they're getting people to take a bunch of medicine instead of actually healing their bodies the proper way. Yeah. And it's also being like pushed on kids. So all these, you got all these kids now like vaping and stuff like that. Like, so yeah. instead of like, you know, smoking, like smoking joints or smoking out of a bong or whatever, you got all these kids that can like get these like vape pens, you know? And you and got smoke. like, course and <laughs> yeah you can just do it wherever you want nobody can smell it everybody can see it so now you got all these like junior high kids like stoned off of vape pens yeah so it's all like you know i don't i think it's a very powerful medicine and it shouldn't be you know used uh by like teenagers or even like young adults man like this is coming from someone that like i smoked weed all through my teenage years and i know that it probably wasn't the best you know so yeah i agree that's where I think it's a psyop. It's getting it's getting commercialized and it's getting adopted by the government, and it's being pushed. And uh, you should be very like weary of anything that's getting like pushed like that, you know? Yeah. But uh, let's see. Perfidious Bagel Mania says, "Turn this shit into a podcast series." <laughs> Dude, you should do a podcast. I think you'd do really well with it. Um, you know, just like getting one going and i think i think it would do really well dude i was i was thinking about that actually before i started this with you i was like <laughs> damn i should have started this podcast before but if i do start a podcast i will make this the first episode yeah yeah you can save these videos or just like post it and i'll repost it on my channel or whatever and yeah man there, have, have you found a way like i totally forgot again like i always do i was gonna screen record this is there a way to download instagram videos so afterwards, it should give you the, the option to, to like disregard the video, like discard it, or you could like post it to your feed. And right. then um, it also give you an op opportunity to save it as well. So like, for this is for iPhone for like your camera roll, roll or whatever. But uh, okay. I don't know if that works for you. Okay, or... yeah, I, I haven't seen that before. But uh, when I get off, I'll double check that because I, I always see the option where it says like, save the file to instagram but i'll check that that would be definitely helpful man otherwise i'll probably have to find a way to to download it or something mm -hmm. um let's and we see. Can, yeah we kind of i don't know if you if you want to do it at some other time if you're serious about doing the podcast we can maybe do a little more structured come in with a little bit more like you know how like do a q a for our stories and have people like ask us questions so we can come in like questions they want answered kind of what they want to talk about for sure, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I don't have anything set in stone right now, but I was thinking if I do a podcast, it would be helpful to have like someone else, you know what I mean? To, to bounce ideas off of. And, you know, I think it always helps to have like a double, double host or whatever, but yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure something out, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, animal based said break a fast with high meats. <laughs> that sounds gnarly. <laughs> yeah, for sure um all right that's pretty much let's see oh project life says ajana says to throw it back in the fridge do you practice this the same to throw what back in the fridge i think he said the high meat like throwing the high meat back in the fridge 
Mm, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't see why it would hurt. It's, it's. I feel like it's cold enough now. Or, yeah. So, I, I don't see the difference really. I think if you're gonna ferment it, man, just go all out and just ferment it in your cupboard. You know. Yeah, I think so too. All right, cool, man. Well, that's pretty much all the questions, dude. This has been a. This has been awesome, brother. Yeah, it was. It was awesome, man. I'm glad we got the chance to finally officially meet each other. Oh, really, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll be staying in touch with you, man. I hope you have a good rest of your day. This was sick. All right, you too, man. Let's do it right, again. Don't. Later, bye.